Welcome to Life as God Intended. I'm Don Brzezinski. Thanks for tuning in to this broadcast. So I want to welcome you into this four-part series entitled God-Given Desires and Flesh Patterns of Sin. So before we can understand how our God-given desires can become distorted and become flesh patterns of sin, it's essential to first understand what these God-given desires are and why they exist in us and how God intended for them to be expressed through our lives. So this will be the first of a four-part series. So let's jump in. God-given human desires, and I'm distinguishing in the soul. Obviously, we're made up of a spirit, a soul, and a body. We've discussed that in previous broadcasts. We won't be doing that today, but we will be discussing that these God-given desires and flesh patterns of sin, which can and have developed within us, we're focusing on the soul. That's going to be very important for you to understand. So, what are these God-given human desires in the soul? Well, let me illustrate it like this. Imagine a garden filled with beautiful plants, each one unique, vibrant, and designed to thrive under the care of a skilled gardener. God-given desires are like the seeds that are planted in this garden. They are amoral, neutral, in, and neither inherently good nor bad. They are packed with potential for growth. If you've ever planted a garden, you know what I'm talking about. So just as seeds need water, the sunlight, and nutrients to grow into healthy plants, our desires need to be rooted in God's provision for them to flourish properly. And when they are, they reflect His character and purpose. But just like a plant that's neglected or watered improperly, desires can wither or grow in distorted, contorted ways when we try to fulfill them apart from God. And these desires, as I've already mentioned, that are amoral, neutral, neither good nor bad in and of themselves, nonetheless, they are God-given behavioral conduits. They're intended to serve as kind of like a pipeline through which God's character is intended to be expressed in human behavior. So I hope you're getting the analogy here. So let me give you some examples of God-given desires. We all have desires like the desire to be loved and accepted. This desire is fundamental to the human experience. It reflects the fact that we are made in the image of a relational God who is love, which we read about in 1 John 4, 8. I might illustrate it this way. Think of a child reaching for a parent's embrace. That child's longing to be held reflects our deep need for unconditional love and acceptance, to belong. We have an innate desire for connection, community, and intimacy. And this points to the truth that we were created for relationship with God and with others. Let me illustrate it like this. Picture a puzzle piece. It has a specific shape and place where it fits perfectly. 
just like our desire to belong. God created us to fit perfectly in his family, the body of Christ. Another one of our God-given needs is to be nurtured, sustained, and provided for. Our desire for care and provision points to God as our ultimate provider, as Paul wrote about in Philippians 4.19. I might illustrate it like this. Consider a tree planted by a stream. Its roots drink deeply from the water, providing everything it needs for life and growth. In the same way, God is our constant source of substance. Another God-given need that we all have. We have the need for security, meaning, and purpose in life. These desires reflect our search for significance and stability in a world that often feels very unstable. God is our rock and our anchor, as Hebrews 6.19 illustrates, and our ultimate purpose is found in Him. May I illustrate it by thinking of a lighthouse. Amidst the stormy seas of life, we seek security and guidance. God is that unshakable lighthouse, showing us the way and providing security. Not to mention that he is the way, that he is the truth, and he is the life. We also have a desire for identity, for creativity, freedom, worship, and responsibility. These desires reflect aspects of God's own nature, which he has shared with us, or at least he wants to share them with us. For example, our desire for identity mirrors God's design for each of us to be a uniquely created image or in the image in his image, as Genesis 1.27 states. Our desire for, for creativity reflects God as the ultimate creator, and our own creative expressions are reflections of his divine creativity. Our desire for worship points to our fundamental need to acknowledge and glorify the one who is greater than us. Even our basic physical needs, like the desires for food, drink, sleep, and sexual expression, all of these desires are essential, not only for our survival, but our well-being, and were given to us by God for our good. May I illustrate it this way? Just as food fuels our physical body, so our desire for love, belonging, and purpose fuel our soul when they are aligned with God's design. So as you can see, all desires are God-given, and there is nothing wrong with any of these desires. In fact, they were designed by God to be expressed in harmony with his will and purpose for our lives. Let me give an, a window of understanding. God-given desires functions as pipelines. Just as water flows through pipes to nourish crops, so too should God's character flow through our desires, resulting in behaviors that reflect his love, grace, and truth. However, as we all may know and realize, problems arise 
when we try to fulfill these desires apart from God. This is when distortion sets in. The pipeline becomes clogged, diverted, or broken. And instead of expressing God's character, our desires become self-focused and sinful. You and I were created to choose to derive our life and character from Him. In conclusion, now that we've laid a foundation for understanding what God-given desires are, it's clear that these desires were designed for good. But when we attempt to meet these needs on our own terms, outside of God's purpose, they become distorted. And in the next video, we will explore how these desires become twisted into flesh patterns when pursued apart from God. So join me for part two as we continue our journey through this series. And may I call you to action. Why not reflect this week? Take some time to reflect on the desires you recognize in your own life. Are you seeing these desires as God-given? Or are there areas where you've sought to fulfill them apart from God? As mentioned in the next video, we'll dive deeper into what happens when these desires are pursued outside of God's will, leading to distortion and brokenness. Thanks for joining me for this broadcast and sharing these with your friends.